film from last year's game, or since they've lost so much, is it just like watching a completely different team? I don't know. I didn't watch it. Is that unusual for you to not watch? Yeah, uh, probably. Is it just because it was such a tough loss? Yeah. What, they are totally different. How, what, they shoot it maybe a little bit better. They've still got athletes, but what, what have you seen with them this year? And they're doing, are they doing a lot of the same stuff? Um, they're, they're, really, um, they're really tenacious on the defensive end. I think a lot more than a year ago. I think they're really um, um, denying almost all of the floor. You know, in Jones and Goldwire, you have maybe two of the best defensive perimeter players in our league. And, um, you know, those guys attack the ball. Um, they hawk passing lanes. They do a really good job of putting pressure on your perimeter. Uh, you know, offensively, they're very unique in that they, they know what they're doing. They're throwing it right into Vernon Carey. And uh, he does a great job of running the floor. Uh, he seals incredibly deep. He's got a great touch. Um, you know, and they just sort of play off of him. And obviously, Jones has become a much better uh, scorer than he was a year ago. That wasn't his role. But he's shooting it, whether it's mid-range or from the three, with a lot more confidence. His percentage is up, and their team's percentage from the three-point line is, is a lot higher than it was a year ago. How did uh, Clemson be successful against them? Um, well, I think that um, you know they've got a unique situation with their five-man. You know, a lot of times a way that you can relieve pressure um, is, is to try to play through your five a little bit on the perimeter because most of the time five men defensively are going to have a hard time denying and pressuring a catch like a point guard um, defensively would or a perimeter player would. And so they use the mere Sims and, and a handful of ways to, uh, you know, relieve that pressure, um, to do some dribble at back doors. They hit some shots and, um, you know, I don't think it was, um, you know, Duke's best game. But you give Clemson a lot of credit, you know, and again, I think a lot of it started offensively through their five. For you guys, what what do you think is the most important factors? To I think there are a lot of important factors. Uh, one of the biggest factors will be our, our ability to keep them off the offensive glass. I mean, they lead our league in offensive rebounding. You know, again, trying to limit carries deep touches. I mean, he's going to touch the ball. I mean, that's their focus is to throw it in. Is he catching it at three feet or is he catching it at 10 feet? You know, we've got to be able to do our work early. We have to be able to pressure the ball, pressure passers in a way that they can't just find him uh, under the hoop. And, um, you know, we certainly have to take care of the ball. You know, we've got to be able to play our offense within uh, 30 feet of the basket, not 50 feet of the basket. And, uh, again, it's easier said than done. But that's, that's what you have to do if you want to give yourself a chance to win. Have you been pleased with your offensive rebounding? <laughs> offensive rebounding? Um, it can be better. Oh, I guess it would be defensive rebounding. I'm sorry, defensive rebounding. Because you said keep them off the offensive glass. Yeah, I mean, we, um, you know, we'll have a challenge for sure tomorrow. And uh, we've got to live up to that challenge. Talking rebounding, Dwayne's rebounds are way up this year, and his minutes are about the same. How has he been more effective on the glass this year? Um, that's a good question. You know, I, I, I think that, you know, he's always been a guy that, that, that puts his nose in there. You know, he's been a, doing a great job all year long on the offensive glass. Um, but we've tried to instill in our group uh, an ability to gain rebound, and he just, you know, he has a nose for the ball. I don't know if it's more experience or what it is, but uh, he's doing the job. When you watched the game the other day, David said he still feels like he's a long way from where he needs to be. Did you feel like watching back that it was a good step in the right direction? I think David's continuing to progress. Um, you know, I think that uh, his ascension won't, you know, won't come without dips. You just want his low points to be a lot higher than they were a month ago, two months ago. It's hard, you know, you don't play basketball. I said this, you know, you do all rehab for a couple months missed the game for four, four and a half months, and then to step in basically closer to ACC play, at least full time. But, you know, our goal all along is to try to keep getting him more and more experience. And uh, I think he's grown each game. You know, he's made mistakes, certainly. But I, I see areas that he's really improving. And he's going to help our team win. Seems like Fresh it has the ability to pretty much be the same guy no matter who he's paired with in the backcourt. Is that how you see things in there? I just think he's very, very steady. I think his teammates know what he's getting, you know, going to give them. 
I think he's done a phenomenal job defensively, really all year long. And, um, you know, in key moments, you know, he's hit threes at UK. He's, you know, hits three on the road at Pitt. Like, he's just, uh, he's a gamer. And he brings it every single day in practice. I think his teammates have grown to really trust him and appreciate, um, his, you know, his play. Uh, and he's also really become a steady leader for us, which is great. Has there been anything about him, Chris, it's, that you've been overly pleased with re regarding how, what you thought he would give you when you brought him in? Um, well, we weren't, we weren't exactly sure, um, you know, how we would take care of the ball. You know, primarily as a, as a sophomore and junior, he played off the ball. You know, his freshman year, you know, you could really see him, uh, you know, in his opportunity when he played on the ball. And we knew that coming in this year, his opportunity here would be more you know, having the ball in his hands and, uh, you know, allowing him to play in ball screen situations. And I think he's, you know, his assist turnover ratio has been really, really good. He hasn't shot it maybe uh, as well, but again, he's, he's hit clutch shots when, when we needed him. And he's been a very, very solid defender all year long. I think Bob, Bob Ronald mentioned this after the game, that your offense tends to have some dead spots in it, game to game, you can't even put your finger on why or what you can do about it? Yeah, we, we have to be able to finish in the lane. I mean, that's, that's our team's um, Achilles heel on the on offensive end. It just is. I mean, we, uh, we struggle to finish at times through contact, and uh, we've got to be better at that. You know, we can't rely solely on just hitting jump shots. You know, Steven, uh, up until the last few games, has been pretty consistent. But um, in the last couple games, not as much. We need him to get back on track. But just overall, our ability to score, uh, and generate offense in the lane. Uh, you know, just has to be better. Seems like Matthew Hurts played a lot better recently for them. You saw him a lot in the recruiting show. He's just such a unique player, and a, he's a difficult matchup, is he not? He is. I mean, he's very, uh, he's very tall. He can shoot it. He's got a really high release point. I and mean, when he catches it at his shoulders, he shoots. He doesn't dip the ball at all. Um, you know, they use him in situations where they ISO uh, the other team's four man, and you know, he's always going to space the floor um, and. and you know, they'll put him in positions where he's either being the passer in high-low situations or the receiver. And again, he's 6'10". Uh, so uh, it's a challenge. And, uh, you know, we have an, an experienced front court, so I'd like to sit, think those guys are up to the challenge. Stephen fully back from that bug he had. And then also, what you think about Malik Williams' play at, at Pittsburgh? Similar to took another step. Yeah, I'd say Steve's um, just about through with uh, what was, uh, you know, plaguing him. and. and in terms of Malik, I think that you know him hitting his free throws down the stretch was, was huge for our team. Hopefully, huge for his confidence. I think his uh, offensive rebound putback. I mean, he doesn't get that when we may not win the game. And uh, his defense have talked about it all year long. Uh, he can guard perimeter guys. He can guard big guys. And seems to affect things at the rim. So uh, you know, it was really good to see him in his efforts the other night at Pitt.